Hello everyone, wherever you are, and thank you for joining the Audacious Church Daily Devotional. I'm Jed Tyrrell, and I run three energy saving and sustainability businesses and an ethical gourmet coffee firm. I'm in the Audacious Business Leadership Team. You might see me leading on Alpha. I'm in the car park team at Central Campus. In this series, we'll be talking and sharing about relationships. I don't know about you, but when I look back on my life, I have a number of regrets when it comes to relationships. Times when my insecurities have led to a sharp word and even a row. The worst of which was the breakdown of my marriage, an institution God affirms over and over as part of the fundamentals of family life. The Bible is clear about how God wants us to live. And when you're living in conflict with this, it can feel like you're hanging on with your fingertips as you know you're in the wrong place, but with the full belief of what Jesus has done for you. Fortunately for us, God doesn't see it the same way. When Jesus died and rose again, he made way for us to be with him, his Father and the Holy Spirit, forever, as long as we invite him into, it, into our lives. I did this in June 1990, and through all my difficulties, I thank God I have never lost my faith in what he did for me, even when everything else was shaken and stripped away a lot of which was my own doing. When we look to God to seek vision for the perfect relationship, we can see it right from the beginning of creation in the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Genesis 1.26 says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. The commitment to a relationship with each other and with us was there right in the beginning as the perfect example of how things should be. Unfortunately, later in Genesis, we see humanity turning its back on God and all the ways he knows are best for us to live. Despite that, we read in the Bible and know for ourselves about the rescue plan of Jesus coming to earth to save us from our rejection of God. This amazing plan shows us God's never-ending determination to see us in a relationship with him. God never fails. Before I got married, a friend gave me a card with the famous verse from Jeremiah 29.11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. For years following the breakdown of my marriage, I questioned God about this verse. How could it have been true for us, especially given how sure we were that God was in the midst of our coming together, which ended in brokenness and heartbreak? I now understand this verse is a statement of his intentions towards us, rather than how we feel when things go wrong. We have to take responsibility for our part in how things happen. It's all about him and not us. They are his plans that are to always prosper us, always to give hope and a future, and we have to follow those plans and his leadership. I'm acutely aware of the mistakes I've made and when I've turned away from God and his plans, and I live with them mistakes every day. But I'm so grateful God didn't leave me there. I can see now his plan included to never give up on me. God brought me to Audacious in an incredible journey and I can see went back over 10 years and after a time of just coming to worship and be in his presence, I now feel a sense of being restored and forgiven and able to serve again. John 15 1 says, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. I look back and it felt like God was pruning me, cutting everything back, taking away all the the securities I'd built my life on. But he was doing it for something better and to learn to trust him, not my own strength. He was building a stronger foundation and never gave up on me. He surrounded me in gracious fellowship in the business team, Alpha 
small groups and car park, and I feel alive and active again. In business, God has revealed a new chapter for me. Significantly, God has brought me knowledge and wisdom to try my best to think of the outcomes in how to deal with others as I spend time with them, whether at home, work or church, and to value those relationships as much as he does his one with us. The plans in Jeremiah are his plans for us, not ours to fit into his. Whilst we have to live with the difficulties of our choices, he never gives up on us, constantly looking to work with us and restore us for even greater things. For me, I couldn't be more thankful. He demonstrates a perfect relationship with a never-ending love. For our part, we need to listen, learn, follow him, and so importantly, trust him, and he will take care of the rest. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, please forgive us for when we've played our part in the breakdown of relationships, or times when we could have tried harder or brought more grace. Thank you for your never-ending commitment to us. Help us to take action to invite you to restore broken relationships of days gone by or ones we are struggling with today, so that you might be glorified through the good works you are prepared for us in advance. I hope and pray that you found this devotionally encouraging in some way and look forward to seeing you in church again soon.